put this wicked wheel on my uh, 1988 Ford uh, E250. And uh, the nice thing about the van is I got this great big access hole to the turbo. And after watching a bunch of videos, I'm kind of thinking about doing this just here without pulling the turbo off, even though in the instructions from uh, from uh, like Diesel Stop or Diesel, whatever the heck that company is, they, uh, they say to take the turbo off, but I'm kind of thinking of just leaving it as is. I have to pull the exhaust pipe off and then pull the intake off and then this thing comes off pretty easily. Hopefully, there might be some tricky bolts, but I mean, this is, this seems like a no-brainer to me, but we'll find out. Just undoing the clamps on the uh, section of hose that goes from the intake hat to the turbo. And then there's a little orange coupler there. And the intake hat's held on by a long 9 16th inch bolt that goes into the that goes into the uh, into the intake. Alright, so now you gotta work the CDR hose around, throttle linkage and everything else. It is a real pain, but doable. All right, so there's that. Oh, there's my mark. I can put it back when it's done. These little, like, uh, double brackets here um, hold the turbo on, and there's three of them, and there's two bolts per coupler. It's kind of a good idea for working on this is find the thinnest half inch that you got because it is barely enough room to fit that thing in there. The nice thing about once you get the turbo loose is that you can actually rotate this up so that way you can get that extra pull a lot easier than when it first had to be loosened. Well, this should just come right off. There we go. There's the old one. Still looks pretty good, actually. Should have done this right when I pulled the uh, air filter uh, tubing off of there, but I want to put a little bit of penetrating oil. Let that set for quite a while. This is according to the formal instructions of it, but I'm not really following the instructions that well anyway because I didn't take the turbo off. Seems kind of overkill for this van because. I have such good access to this thing that I just think it would be a dumb idea, but maybe I'm learning something here. So if you watch the threads, I'm going to try to hold this as steady as possible. I'm going to spin it. You're going to see that it's a wrong thread. It's a, it's a, uh, like a lefty, tighty, righty, loosey. See that? So I'm actually tightening it, but that would actually... You can see the, the slope of the thread. If you tighten this, it's going to undo it. All right, just use the impact driver to take that nut off of there, and I can pull her off. Special nut. It's got a right hand thread, so don't lose it. 
So I undid the the uh, downpipe here. It's pretty easy on the Hypermax. There's just one bolt that holds it here, and then I have a coupler at the end um, underneath the van. That's I designed it that way, so it's easy to release. So this comes off, and you can see the turbine inside there. And the reason why I did that is because I just could not seem to get this off of here without spinning. Like I tried holding this, and I don't want to put any strain any metal on these threads so I was trying to do it with my fingers and it just wasn't working. Come on. And it just slides off. Come on. There. There we go. So that's the old one. There's the old one and uh here's the new one. Well, the uh, reinstallation is really pretty simple. You just slide it back on. It's going to be a little snug, um, and then you'll use the, the nut to kind of push it on. I checked it beforehand to make sure this thing fits in the other um, housing. Look here, it's a tight squeeze. Like, when I put it in there, it's really snug. So you want to check that just to make sure that you got the right, the right fitting. You just kind of want to make it snug because of the right hand thread it'll just snug itself um, as it spins. Um, key thing is make sure this is flush in here. Um, if it's not pressed in all the way it's going to clash with the housing. Start with the hardest ones first. The one that's closest to the return line feed. And obviously be real gentle around the blades. And uh, just check it out, make sure it spins. So using the marks that we marked before, just rotate the housing until it matches. There you go. <sighs> Lastly, and completely imperative to the whole project, is to make sure this thing doesn't clash with the housing. And the way I've set it up is I don't hear any grinding, it spins nice. Um, so I think I'm good. It's a major difference. This Wicked Wheel is really, really different than the uh, the stock turbine because it really protrudes into this chamber, so it must just suck that air right in and push it through. Let's see how it works. Alright, air filter housing is back on. You know, clamps are tightened. Everything should be good. Intake hat. Oh, I didn't tighten it down yet. Better do that.